Okay, now we get to get to what I really want to talk about. The, the videos leading up to this have been me trying to share a little of what I know. I'm not an expert in this, but I, I hope what I'm saying, you know, if it's confusing, it, it at least piques some curiosity and you can go look stuff up on the internet or, you know, re read a book about it. But so we, we've talked about a little bit of chassis design history, and then we went through the, the Lotus 38 plans. But what I'm interested in is I've got a new car design uh, that I want to share. Part of this is every time I make a car, I learn something and there's things that I want to do better the next time. Uh, but the, the idea for this car came because my son learns different bits of technology about cars and then gets really interested in them. And he's been into Group C race cars from Le Mans. And the idea of a tunnel car has really piqued his interest. And the downside to a tunnel car from the standpoint of me making it out of an aluminum monocoque is the chassis needs to be designed with the tunnels from the start. You can't take something you've already made and just put tunnels on it. At least, not, I mean, that would be really hard. I've always wanted a Can-Am car. And the DD40 is, is very close to that, but you know, it's, it's not quite that level of ridiculousness that a Can-Am car is. I mean, if you, if you don't know about Can-Am cars, think of a GT40 without a roof, 800 pounds lighter, and an eight liter engine. That's a Can-Am car. They were, at the time, th this Can-Am had a lot to do with Formula One moving their engine size limit up to three liters because the Can-Am cars were faster at a lot of the same circuits. And Formula One was like, well, we can't be slower than somebody else. So taking that idea of, I want a Can-Am car, my son wants a tunnel car. Then I got to thinking about, I had recently read a book uh, about Chaparral uh, mainly because there are things, there are a lot of things I know about chaparral race cars and there's stuff I've always been confused about and this helps straighten it out. One of the things is for most of the cars they made, there were two chassis, uh, two chassis styles. One was a fiberglass chassis and one was an aluminum chassis. And what they did with both of those was they evolved the cars they made out of them. So let me give you an example. So this car, the 2A, or just the Chaparral 2 to begin with, is the exact same chassis that later became this car, competed at Le Mans and, and other sports car circuits in Europe, which then later became this car. Now, there were multiple chassis, and, and some had time as each of these, but there was one chassis in particular that spent time as all three of these cars. And so I kind of like the idea of being able to develop the car, mainly by aerodynamics. I mean, you're not changing things structurally. But I like the idea that if I built a certain chassis, I could spend the rest of my life developing it and just trying different things with it and keeping the same chassis, but trying uh, suspension mounted, uh, a high wing that's mounted directly on the suspension, mounted, uh, trying a body mounted wing, trying an open top, trying a closed top, trying you know, squared off sides, trying a wedge shape, trying, uh, you know, you, you name it. I want to do a body kind of like this. I, you know, if I could get like a Lotus T160 body, I would just do that. This is a Ferrari 612, uh, one of the early iterations of the car before it, it grew wings. And, and this is just a fairly simple shape in that a lot of this is, is flat and straight meaning I, I could make my buck using a lot of plywood and then really I just got to sculpt uh, the wheel arches and you know the curve on the door but that's that's not a lot. My son is then asked well could we do a version that looks like this and I said absolutely. Uh, this is actually a simpler shape assuming I can find a way to do the windshield or source uh, that but uh, having tunnels on the car works a lot with the rear wing, that the air coming out of here helps affect the air going over and under the wing. So th this is something else I'd like to try. Imagine if this was all the same car and I was just making a new body each time. So without further ado, I designed this. Now this is my quarter scale paper mock-up. I use graph paper. It's just, it's a nice analogous material for the sheet metal because I'm not doing compound curves or anything, I'm just doing folds 
Um, so if I can do it in paper, I can definitely do it uh, in aluminum. All the balsa wood represents a place where there'd be steel tubing. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain, I, we're, gonna, we're gonna go through this and, and talk about this, but the, the primary feature, uh, my paper's a little wonky here, are these two tunnels, which uh, if we look under here, they're going uh, just forward. It's, a, it's about the middle of the chassis, but they're going to a point just forward of where the center of gravity would be in the car. The, there, there's some science that goes into, some engineering I should say, that goes into where you have the, the star of the tunnels, where you have the throat of the venturi you're creating for the ground effect. And I'm trying to, trying to pick something that, that I could play with later. Obviously I could I could put blanking material in and have this start further back to get the, I mean, what you're trying to do is, is get the center of pressure, low pressure right to get the right balance of the car versus how much pressure, how much aerodynamic load you're adding to the front and the rear. I could obviously blank this and, and move it back that way. If I want to go forward though, um, based on the rest of the design of the chassis, this is as far forward as I can go, but I could actually add a little hump here and some little fins to to make the Venturi further forward. Basically, I, it would, I'd have to rely on skirts at, at that point. Uh, but that's something else to try. You know, we could try skirts. We could try different ride heights and see where, where kind of the sweet spot is. Uh, we could try vortex generators and try to seal the sides that way, like they're doing in Formula One now. It's something just to learn from and to spend years tinkering with and, and not get bored with. So part of the reason I picked where I, I, I did for those tunnels is because I use what is the seat back here, um, where that goes down. This is, this is all part of the chassis, this is structural. So that throat is starting right where this meets the floor. So that part of the floor is really well supported. I mean, it's, it's got a straight line for load path to the rear bulkhead, uh, well, the middle bulkhead, the, the, the firewall bulkhead. We're gonna look at at the, the, the drawings I have, but while this is here, I, I should show, compared to my GT40 mock-up, this, I'm putting, I'm putting a lot of load on this. This is way stiffer. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to describe just how much stiffer this is and how incredible it is, because this is just paper through the middle of it. Let me, let me back up a little bit. So, so starting this, I, I'd always kind of knew if, if I did another chassis like this, I would do a Can-Am car. And I really like the, the Lotus T160 chassis. It's also, if uh, you look at um, a T70 uh, Mark III-B, is, is the chassis is almost ex identical to a T160, which is weird because other T70 chassis are very different. Um, but it looks like this. Um, but here's another drawing. And I just like, there's a lot of similarities to how a GD40 was planned out. It's Eric Broadley designed both. Uh, but this makes a lot more sense. It's simpler, it's lighter, and it's stiffer. And it's, it's not relying on, on a roof at all because I don't want to have a roof, but if I do have a roof, that'll just be for aerodynamic reasons. So <clears throat> I really wanted to do a chassis like that and had some ideas, but then I noticed, you know, I've got a bunch of Can-Am car models, and I've got this guy here, and I don't know if you, how well you can see with this little guy, but I noticed a number of them and, and other sports cars from the area do this thing here where this, the, the chassis is made so that air can get out of here, and that seemed like aerodynamically a good idea, but also something I really like about the Indy car versus the GT40 is I can move the wheels anywhere I want, and you know, there's no fender that it has to line up with. So if I decide I want to change the, the wheelbase, I can just do that. I'm thinking if I do something like this, yeah, I've still got a fender, but this opening is going to be big enough that I could probably move the wheel back an inch or forward a half inch or something, and it wouldn't look that odd. It wouldn't look like, well, why is your wheel broken? You know, So I could still play with the, the location of the wheels that way, and in the rear, Again, another thing I like about the design of this car, uh, same as a um, Porsche 917, there's no back really to this, this wheel. So again, I could have this wheel further forward, you know, you know, way up here against here or further back, and it's not gonna look wrong, and I can, 
I can play with, with you know, what works best for, for handling and, and weight distribution. So, so I, liked, I liked that idea. So I, so I, incorporated, uh, I incorporated that in. You, you, you see the, the chassis does this. This mock-up is actually a little bit, a little bit wrong because um, there were a couple things I noticed as I had done my drawings and then I was putting this together and there were things that like, I had in my head one way but then when I went to actually do them uh, in three dimensions I realized oh, I didn't quite have this right and, and so I, I worked it out and then decided no I want to do something slightly different. Primarily uh, it's, it's these corners here I'm moving in a couple inches so instead of this coming coming straight up, it, it angles in. And the reason is, is so that my body here can, can have a little more of a curve to it to, to, to mimic this, uh, this shape here. And, and the, the, the fender um, bulge uh, would be kind of here. And I, I just want to have, this, this would probably be enough, but I don't want to make the chassis and then realize, oh, I can't make the shape I really want because I put that corner there. You know, I'm, I'm trying to make it so I'm as free as possible with the body design. This would be round tube up here and bent. It wouldn't be square. This, you know, this is a roll bar. These here would actually probably be detachable. Uh, you just bolt in. And this is nice for, for, for stiffness, but really it's, it's just trying to make it safer. If I really wanted to make it safer, it should have something here. What I did is I hid in here, there's, there's another, um, another structure like this that would be round tube uh, going through that, that welds to the, the little bit of steel up front. And if you do, I didn't bring a rule. If you do the broomstick test, uh, it being there is actually better than if something was at this height. And I want this, this low uh, windshield area height. And then if, to, to really make it safer, you know, I try to think if my kid's ever going to drive this someday, I, I don't want to. I tend to not worry about myself too much, but I worry more about him. I, I could put some, some brackets here that, that come up a little bit and then put tubes going across to, to make this a little safer. And it, and it could add some rigidity too, uh, but that wouldn't be it, its primary concern. Compared to the GT40, these Sponsons are wider and taller and they're angled to create more of a straight line from the bulkhead uh, to the front suspension. So, so that's, got, that's all one clear path. I've got a lot of the same similar treatment. I'm not gonna run the coolant pipes through this middle thing, so I made this thinner. Uh, I've also moved, from, from a comment I got on my GT40 video, uh, was something I always wondered. Original GT40s, the, the driver's side edge of this center section is the center line of the car. So this is actually offset and that, that offsets the driver slightly closer to the middle of the car. And so I've done that here. So this side is slightly bigger than this side. Uh, I would only do a fuel tank in the passenger side. So I could put the stick shift right in here. The only reason I did two tanks in, the, in my GT40 was because I, I was gonna have two openings in the nose and I wanted to have the two gas caps for that look. Uh, but I have a short tank because I've got the stick shift right here in the GT40. I've got a short tank up here and then a, a longer tank on the passenger side. So this one, I just do a passenger side tank. This is all simpler. Uh, I've, I've made this so it, a, a good wheelbase would probably be 94 and a half inches with this. But if, if you put a little angle on some things, you could easily do 94 inches or maybe even, even less. And then you could do longer if you wanted. But I've also made it so that my front suspension's a little better in that I've got more of a straight line uh, for the lateral links going here. Uh, and then I would come back to this corner uh, and have a, a bracket in here that, that uh, the suspension would attach to and be easier to adjust than, than what I have on the GT40. Again, I'm like the GT40 and like Can-Am cars from the time, the, the, it'll be a right-hand drive car with the stick shift over here. In the back, uh, and we're gonna go through this on the drawings. Um, so I said th this would be removable. This here would be removable for taking the engine in and out. This structure here is almost exactly like I did on the GT40. I've got these longer things here just to give me more to support the tunnels. Uh, and I would probably have things come up from here and another platform to support the, the rear body work. But that's not here because there, there's no point in me putting it on the model until I know, you know, until I've designed the body and, and I know where I want it to be. 
and, and when I do that, I'll, I'll put some thought into, you know, the, this Ferrari shape I have, the, the tail comes up at an angle here. Uh, but if I do the, the Mazda 787, it does, but not as much. So, so I'd have this so that I can, I can have different heights here and, and it'll still wor work. I said after I did the GD40 that I was going to stop being such a chicken and uh, I was going to make everything back here a full aluminum monocoque and not have a bunch of steel tubes in there as well. And I failed. Um, I, I didn't design this uh, that way. Uh, but I'm going to go through why. There's, I have a reason. I have a number of reasons why. Uh, it's a lot of things where the, the, the steel tubes, there's less steel tubes. Uh, they're just kind of an easier solution than what I would have to do. And a lot of it has to do with the tunnels. Putting the tunnels through here, this is what drove the, the move to carbon fiber chassis in Formula One and in sports cars, because you need your structure to be as narrow as possible to make room for these tunnels. And the, the problem is that what's giving you strength with the, the aluminum monocoque is having the, that aluminum spread out, but I've got these tunnels that are now going through an area that would normally be structural. The, the size of the tunnels, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice if these were bigger, but this is another development thing we can do. What I figured out, because I've been using uh, T-Bird uh, rear knuckles, which I'm not going to do on this car because they're not being made anymore. And that's why this bulkhead, unlike my GD40 or what I did in the 38 plans, isn't at an angle. It isn't angling back. It's straight up and down because the, the knuckles, I'll probably use newer uh, late model um, uh, Mustang knuckles. I can mount those. They're less of a triangle shape. So I can have, I can use a straight uh, bulkhead here. This obviously might change if I if I find different different rear uprights that, that I'd like better. But I'm going to try to try to go this route. They they've still got a similar geometry to the the T-Bird in that the lower links mount really close to the drive shaft because in a road car, it's it's up off the ground. It doesn't have structure down down lower, so it's got to have that that lower link up higher which sucks in, in a race car because we've got our strength all the way down here, so it'd be nice to have the suspension mount down here. So I've always saw this as a problem, but it dawned on me, well, wait a second, if I have to have those up so high and, and the lower I want the ride height, basically the higher I have to have those on the suspension, then rather than having to do all, all a bunch of weird crap to have the rear suspension go through this tunnel, I can just mount the suspension up here and I figured out it would mount about six inches up. And that means this tunnel could be five inches high right there, and, and I could have an inch of droop from six inches and have the suspension completely above the tunnel. So that's kind of the limiting factor in the angle here. I, it has both an angle up and then also an angle out. Uh, these here are straight, and this here has about a three degree angle. But as a point of development, besides, besides obviously I could do a floor that go, fits inside this and has, you know, is maybe shallower here and then has more of a curve going in. I could also have these tunnels end right, right past the suspension and then actually curve, uh, have that kind of bell-shaped curve coming up to make them deeper if I wanted to get more effect out of them, which, you know, uh, something to try. But all of these things are just things to try. For the trailing arms on the rear suspension, I'm again looking at the Lola chassis and the, the top arms, the top trailing arms would come to, to the metal in this bulkhead. And coming all the way out here is a little worrisome, especially if I decide to up the size of the rear tires, but it'll be close. I'll probably just have a, a sleeve hole in here and the sleeve will come out a bit and maybe I'll have something else here, um, you know, maybe a, a link here to help tie the load from, from where it is here. Uh, into the, the, the chassis, so, so this just isn't flexing. But then the lower links, uh, so I just kind of drew a hole here. Here I crudely cut a hole. Um, the lower links would go in and they would mount to the metal that supports the motor mounts, which if you see this cross, uh, this tube right here going across, the, the motor mounts would be here and, and here and about six inches up. And that, I, I, I did this model without any steel tube going in here, and, and you can see because I can push the in there. And I realized 
that um, motor mount would stick up about here and that means this isn't quite the right angle um, and I could just raise this up so this is a, a straight line but I think what I'm going to do is there's tube there's a tube running right here at this corner and there's a tube on the bottom I think I'm just going to run a tube from here up and I've got a tube here and that helps because the the trailing arm mount is going to be on the inside of, of the tube here and that, that gives me more space there. Okay, again, I know it's, I've, I feel like I'm cheating. I'm, well, I'm chickening out and cheating in having the steel back there. But what I'm trying to do is create as, a narrow structure here that's still stiff. And part of it too is that I'm actually gonna use the aluminum in this tunnel as, as part of the structure connecting one end to the other. Something you get into though, with cars of the era. Now, now in Formula One, when the DFE came out, suddenly the engine was a stress member and you didn't need all this junk back here because the engine did it for you. What you had when you had American V8s, um, what you have is metal, you have the engine mad and you have metal running along the side of the engine and bolting to the engine to, to stiffen the engine. And so the engine's kind of semi-stressed. The engine kind of acts as a stress member, but the more an American V8 is stressed like that, the more any engine is stressed that wasn't meant to be stressed, the faster it's gonna wear out because the, those torsional forces are changing the shape of the cylinders while the piston's going up and down. So it will wear out. So what they're doing is they're strengthening it with these tubes and, and the tubes you know, run from different points on, on the chassis to uh, the, the suspension pickup points and, and where it holds up the transmission. And you know, that's, that's kind of solving the problem here. I'm, I'm trying to do that idea, but I'm trying to tie in the, the metal from the, the tunnels into that to make it all work together as one structure. Something though that I would love to do is, this here is from a, a March Can-Am car. What they've done is they've made a plate that, that's the front of the engine, this bolts to the chassis, and then there, there's steel tubes triangulating everything uh, to the rear suspension. So this is all one unit. When you want to change the engine, you unbolt this plate and you can leave the wheels on and roll it on the wheels. I mean, you have to put something under here, but you know, like a big wheelbarrow, uh, just move it back as a unit. And that's just plain cool. As you can tell, I get excited about stuff like this. Something I did on the GT40 that I'll probably do here too is here where it's kind of narrow, and I've got sheet metal on, on the inside and the outside. Uh, I'll probably fill this with foam. Uh, that's something uh, McLaren did later. And okay, so my favorite thing about this is I thought of that before I knew they had done it. I once saw, it was some wildlife video. I, I think I was in college. I was just watching PBS because I was bored and had nothing to do. Not that that's the only reason to watch PBS, but I basically trying to say I was vegging out. And they were talking about the amazing strength of a parrot's beak, I think. And what the guy showed is, is he, he took this piece, of this triangular piece of styrofoam. He's like, yeah, so I can just break, it's really stiff, but I can break it really easily. And then he took this triangular piece of plastic that's just thin plastic, you know, thicker than a plastic bag. So it, it's kind of stiff, but, but you could just crinkle it up like this. It's, it's like paper, paper thin, but kind of stiff. Um, and he's like, but this plastic, I can't tear, but it just collapses. But if I take the styrofoam and he slides the styrofoam in, inside it, I now, it's so stiff, I can't flex it and it won't break. And I thought, oh, there's gotta be an awesome application for that. So I had this idea and I did it on the GD40 in, in, in places where I thought my structure just wasn't that wide um, and, and could you know, maybe use some stiffening. I filled it with, with expanding foam uh, and you can see where I did, you know, it, it made the, the panels bulge a little bit. And so I'm trying to do that thing where the sheet metal is the, the thing on the outside that can't tear, but the foam keeps it stiff. And then I found out McLaren did that on, uh, is it the M26? And there's pictures of them. They would, they would fill it with foam and then put the, the top thing on. I think they, they riveted it on, but they, they, there's, like, there's pictures of like guys kneeling on it as the foam is trying to, to expand and, and come out in, in every which way. So I just, it was validation. It's like, hey, this crazy idea I have, I'm not the only one. I'm planning on roll centers that are probably gonna be ground level uh, of having you know, parallel upper and lower control arms. I'm kind of thinking that with 
the ground effect and possibly wings. I'm gonna need a stiff enough spring that just for, for the aerodynamic load that it's not gonna matter so much if in roll I need a really stiff spring so I can have a nice low roll center. And having the, the parallel links like in the rear with, with the lack of clearance I'm gonna have here, that, that's gonna help. And that also will mean I can play with ride heights and the, the roll center is not gonna change. Because I'm gonna to wanna to see, you know, is without skirts, is, are these tunnels completely useless if I have a ride height of three inches? Uh, do they work at two inches? Do I have to be down at one inch? If I put skirts on, you know, where does that change that? Uh, if, if I'm able to make vortex generators that work, how, how does that work? You know, how does the ride, ride height affect that? I want practical answers. I don't want, um, well, I think it'll do this. Like, no, I want to test it. I want real data. I want, I want to put, uh, you know, it may just be fluid tubes or if I can find some other, if there's an electric sensor that, that I can use for pressure, I'm going to want to see what the pressures are at different, different points because I want as much data as possible uh, as to how all this is working. Uh, so here's a look at the front of the car. Here's what I was talking about where I've got this one and a half inch round tube structure that, that's kind of a roll hoop for the front and it's, it's low, but with the broom handle test, it's not terrible here and it's better than if something was right here. So then I could add extensions here and, and have cross braces there for, for added safety. Because the, this center thing is actually off center, the, this here is the center line of the car, uh, this gives me a little more foot room inside here than I have in the GT40. Uh, and I've also gave it a, a little more height. Uh, what I have in the GT40 is 12 inches inside and only about 11 inches. Well, there, there's more once you get your foot past one of the bars, but I find that if I'm not wearing my driver's shoes, I only, I only wear 10 and a half shoes, and if I'm wearing anything other than the driver's shoes, it's a little tight. Um, so this would be a little better that way. Then I'd also, on the GD40, I had the suspension uh, pickup points out here, and that this angled so that it was a short and a long arm. Uh, but in here, I'm talking about bringing them in more, and I, uh, I have multiple spots, you know, multiple circles here, because I'm not sure yet. I haven't modeled this to find exactly where I'm going to want my pickup points the, to have a, a, the parallel arms uh, with the spindles I'm going to use and the ride height I want and, and, and well I'm going to have ground level roll center but I can move this in on here because the, there's a steel tube going from one side to the other here and so it's going to mount uh, to that in the front. Uh, here you can see that this is bent round tube one and a half inch eighth inch wall thickness. Uh, it doesn't look nearly as ugly as it does on my, my mock-up. I should have got some dowels or something, not that I would have been able to bend those. Uh, here you can see I've drawn this correctly where this comes in more and this will give me more you know, room to have a curve here, which aerodynamically, like if I did the Mazda, it's going to have more of a straight edge, but I like the look of that Ferrari with the curve in there. This here would then serve as the side of the car, so, so the bodywork would just sit on top and this is uh, 11 inches uh, and then I have 9 inches up here so the top of the scuttle is only 20 inches and I, I think I did this roll bar high enough for me but that's the kind of thing that before I bend this and weld it in I'll sit in it with my helmet on and make sure that it's got ample room above my head. This. This is always a dumb compromise for me because the bigger this is, I, the dumber I think the car looks. You know, back in the day, these weren't nearly tall enough to do any good, and I think they look better. But I don't want to get decapitated, so uh, I want this tall enough so that my head isn't the, the tallest thing, but not any taller than it, it needs to be. So that's, that's the front. Here's a drawing of, of the rear, uh, and we're going to get into more detail on this on the, on the next couple of plans because I, I want to talk about a couple things um, I'm thinking of doing here. This here again is is that front scuttle. The the rear just has this these 11 inch sponsons in the back and then the, the tunnels are are actually coming through. This here looks funny. This is at an angle uh, and the tunnels are running from down here through this space and eventually coming up. But let's see that from a different view. 
So this is the, the top view of the chassis, but let's start. This is the plans for the floor. And here you can see, you know, this space here is where the tunnels are. And I actually, my brake isn't long enough, my, my sheet metal brake isn't long enough to make these as one piece. So I would have to make them, I'd probably do them, you know, this would be a piece and this would be a piece and they, they'd be joined here. And, and they would rivet to the tubes here and there's also gonna be sheet metal that, that comes here that could help tie it all together. That also ties into my plan that I could have this change instead of being a, a straight angle here, I could add a, a bit of a curve and make it deeper once I get past where the suspension, the drive shafts come through right here. So I've got steel tubes in here at the bottom and, and the motor mounts would be up, up here. I, I always put this, this cross member in between where the motor mounts are gonna go because they'll weld somewhere between, you know, right, right in, inside of here a bit. What I'm trying to accomplish with the steel tubing here, because plenty of designers have shown you don't need this, you can just do it with aluminum sheet metal. But because I've got the tunnels in the way down here and I can't connect this at the bottom, uh, what I'm, there's two things I'm trying to do. One is to make as stiff a structure as possible here, because again, if this is a tunnel car and I'm talking about adding wings and stuff, there's gonna be a lot of forces on this car. I want this as stiff as possible, so I'm, I'm erring more on the side of stiff than light. The, the other thing is, uh, because the bulk of my structure is riveted aluminum, rivets work loose when they're vibrated by the engine. So, so having this kind of steel cradle in there uh, means I'm feeding the forces of the engine into the rest of the, the chassis through a ton of rivets, uh, you know, up and down these things and, and into, I'm, I'm gonna have a steel bulkhead here anyways. This is gonna be steel, this is gonna be steel. So the whole, you know, I'm chickening out and adding steel around it. I'm really, it's, it's two tubes here, two tubes here, and, and this cross tube. And then uh, you'll see on the next plan, I am going to add a, a tube in here and here. And what, what that does is, is this here has the loads. This is the rear suspension is all going to mount up here and, and then the trailing arms to here. So, so this unit has all the rear suspension and all the way of the drivetrain, which is the heaviest kind of single unit weight. And that's just getting fed into the structure of the sponsons through a ton of rivets through here, through the floor, through the structure here of the tunnels, and then there'll be, you know, add to sheet metal here. Normally, uh, if I was going to do this without these tubes, the, I would have an aluminum structure and then I would have steel brackets where the motor mounts are that then spread that load as across many rivets as possible in, in the correct directions for the way the loads would be side to side and forward and back and, and, and up and down. But, but this, this structure just, it's easy to make. It's not that heavy and it's, it's gonna really allow me to spread that load out to the sponsons, which are the main structure of the car. And I think tie in nicely with the tunnels. Uh, here, I didn't quite figure this out right, but, but this is where the, that, um, that rollover hoop in the front is if I can call it that, and that would tie into steel tubes going here. This one's on the floor. This actually acts as a heel rest, and then it, you might as well have it there to, to stiffen this connection because you'd have the back end of the lower uh, control arms would here would come here. The, they would come out like this, come in here. So, so well, here, let's look on the, on the next one. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. before we do, let, let's go through some weirdness here. The designer of some of the shadows and the titanium car, he had this, I've read a book by him, uh, Peter Bryant. Uh, he had this idea to divide up the kind of rectangles you get, or rhombus in this case, in the sponsons with diagonals to make it even stiffer. And I thought that was a great idea. And he had a lot of trouble because he had fuel tanks in all these spaces. So he had to make a bunch. And I think he, he did crosses the other way too. You know, someone might argue that, that this isn't worth it, but the thing is, if this is just a, a piece of sheet aluminum. It could be, it could easily be uh, 40 thousandths inch thick. Uh, this would weigh next to nothing and, and could add quite a bit of stiffening. It also has this, the added benefit that when you get in the car, it's make, making the top of this more supported so you can stand on this as you get in the car. I mean, you're gonna stand on it anyways, uh, but it flexing less when you put your foot on it is, is kind of a nice thing. If you look down, so this is the driver's side. On the passenger side, you know, I'm not gonna have a fuel tank here. 
on the passenger side, I want to I, I want to talk about a couple lines that I've got here where it's like, wait, wait what are you what what are you doing there? So this area here is going to be the fuel tank, and I don't need this. The reason it's drawn in here is because when I started this plan, I knew I was going to have this angle here uh, to, to the footwell and the front suspension from this bulkhead because I wanted that to be a nice straight line. I didn't want it to kink, even though it does kind of kink there. Um, this you kind of think of as, as one, one unit that, that connects to the rest of this. So, so what I was thinking was I would have this rectangle coming out here with the fuel tank and everything, and then I thought, well, and then I'll add this line, and rather than having all this, because I don't want to interrupt the fuel tank, I'll leave this in. Remember, this is, so, so this is like one rectangle, and then it's just got this other triangle added to it. Then I realized, no, I should do the idea, which I talked about, of, of not having the chassis come out here like this, but have it angle in like that. And so then this line was just kind of left over there, and I thought, oh, it won't weigh anything. I might as well leave it in. But looking at it now, it's like, no, I I'm going to erase this. We're going to get rid of this. Obviously, I don't have it on this side. This side's different because there's no fuel tank, so I just have the shapes that you have. Whereas here, I'm still going to have this here because I'm not going to bother having a rhombus-shaped fuel tank. I'm just going to order one that's this rectangle. And again, I like the idea of, of having something here to make this easier to, or make this stiffer when you stand on top of it to get into the car. But I really like the idea of, of these kind of triangulations here because, again, there, there's going to be, on, on the upper end of this, there's going to be a tube going straight from here to here, which means you've just got this straight load path all the way to the, the outer extremity of the car where the bulkhead is. So, so that's the bottom. Okay, so this, this is then the, the top of that structure, and obviously you don't have all the steel here because that's, this is all on top of that. The steel would be hidden under this panel here, and I've, I've got the dotted lines. This is where I've added, I originally didn't have this, but this is where I added, uh, the motor mounts would be right there, and this would come up from them to the steel tube I have here and going to here, which, again, I just like the idea of having this be this one unit with the engine and suspension fed into the sponsons here with, with rivets all along here and down here. This being the top, this here's the scuttle, the, the steering wheel will be here, gauges. Uh, stick shift will come out here. This is actually lopsided on, on this side to give you a little more room for where the, when you're going forward with the, the gear shift. And I, I measured this uh, based on the the shifter I have in the GT40, because I'll probably use the same one, uh, the Boxster one. Th th this should give me plenty of room. It does. It only goes about an inch forward uh, from the box when it when it's forward, and this is angling away from you slightly. Oh, um, so the spring purchase would be here, um, and and the the front suspension would would have lateral links that come out here, and then would come back to to this point here, and so the the wheel center by design would probably be about right here, but it could be further forward in it, and it could also be further back it, just by putting a little, a little bend uh, in this arm there. And then in the rear, we're coming straight out from here, and the wheels would be here. And I'm planning on this running wider wheels than the GT40 is running. I, I've been looking at the tires they offer for Can-Am cars, and we're going to go big or go home, so we're going to put some big, fat, sticky tires on it. Which probably isn't a great idea because they'll take longer to heat up and I like to run all across, but it'll look cool. So one more drawing. Here's the car in plan view, and I can't quite fit all the way to the back of the tunnels here on screen at the same time. Uh, but here you get a sense of it looking from the side. Uh, you see the, the seat structure again is part of the frame. This is what I was talking about. The tunnel starts where this connects on the floor. Uh, so this is all really well supported. Uh, this adds a nice little bit of torsional stiffness between one side of the car and the other. Here you can see how, how this angles forward. I have that the, the this will just be sheet metal and I'll probably bend in here uh, to make this stiffer. Uh, I thought about putting some kind of steel, uh, you know, like a roll hoop basically in here, maybe smaller, but I've really made it just big enough to put 
three and a quarter inch gauges in here. This is four inches. So I don't really have room for gauges and, and that hoop. Uh, and you need access to it. You need to be able to reach your hand back here. The other option is I'll, I may cut holes in here and I'll dimple them and then make a cover plate that screws in or something uh, to make it even easier to access things. You, know, you lose a little rigidity, but th that is something I, I can, I think that'll be okay. Um, it's always the kind of balance of, I have to live with it. You know, you want the design to be as good as possible, but you also have to live with it uh, and work on it. Uh, so here you can see uh, the steel is one on the bottom and then one five inches up. And then it's, that's when it starts to angle out and the, the motor mounts would be right about here. Uh, and the rear suspension uh, would attach right about here. Uh, and that, that's also part of the reason is I'm trying to stiffen this because that pickup point is so high, it's being kept from flexing down here. And so you've got, uh, this will be, this will probably be eighth inch thick metal on the bulkhead. So it's, it's not going to give any perceptible amount. I mean, you can you can do a, a there's calculators you can use on, on on the internet that'll show you how much a, a steel tube of, of given dimensions and thickness uh, will will distort. But that's also part of the reason I've got this upper one here, this upper tube. Obviously, this is a terrible way to stiffen this, but it's something, and it'll be tied in to these other things here. So so it's not terrible. And but that. Again, that's also the reason why I'm using this tunnel here, which would be coming out as part of the structure to stiffen all of this. And you know, maybe that's all nuts, but uh, I wanna try it. Here I, I added that thing I talked about where the, the rear bodywork would mount to here and, and you know, would tip up. Again, th this would be detachable. The uh, transmission would mount back here, just like I did on the GT40. So the drive shafts are, are coming through around here. Um, th this will mean I can't have the transmission super low because the output shafts are low, but you know, uh, I'll just have to work with that. So what's the plan? I have this crazy idea that, so I haven't had a job for a while. I've, I've had quite a bit of savings. I had a good severance package and so I, and I had savings besides that. And so I thought, you know, if I'd really like to build this, but I need space and money and time. If I sold the two cars I have now, the GD40 and the 38, that would give me space, that would give me money, and the bulk of that money I would use for living expenses, and that gives me time. So you know, if I, if I made enough money, uh, I could spend the rest of this year just building this car and filming it uh, as I did, uh, not that I'm expecting to make any money from YouTube, but uh, I, I can share this and, and you know, maybe we'll build an audience, maybe we won't. I don't care. I just want the car. I'm really excited about this idea. I thought that I would, you know, selling the car, the cars I have would give me more pause, but having something new, I already kind of feel like, no, 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 those, those cars are yesterday's news. Let's, I, I want to do this. There's one hiccup though now, which is I've had a lot of interviews lately for a particular job that sounds like a really good job, really good job for me. It's kind of right up my alley, and I don't think I'd be able to pass up that job if I get it. So right now I'm kind of in limbo. If I get that job, I'm probably still going to make this. But it won't be over the course of a year. It'll take me multiple years. On the plus side, I don't have to sell either of my cars. I could sell one of them for, to, to have the money, which would be nice, so I could kind of do this all at once rather than, than piecemeal. Or I can just keep them. All I have to say, I'm in limbo right now. I don't know how this is, is gonna happen. If I don't get the job, where I'm probably gonna start building this in a couple months. If I do get the job, I might start this summer, it might be next year, just having, just starting a new job. I don't need the added stress of, of figuring this out. But dang, this would be cool. I mean, you know, wouldn't it be awesome to be driving down the road, well, driving in an autocross and something like this. Oh, and yes, I'm gonna at least put a, a 427 in. I, I'm thinking, um, uh, I've loved the, the engines from Blueprint. I'm thinking uh, a 351 Windsor uh, block board and stroke to 427. It'll be a seven liter engine that, that doesn't weigh much. I can, I can readily get, and they, they have more power than the, the Le Mans 427s in the GD40s. And yeah, I would feel better, you know, I've, it's the engine I ought to have in my Mark II, uh, but I would have it here. So yeah, that, that's what's going on. I hope you like it. I, you're, you're probably 
uh, not as enthused as I am because I don't know what it is. Uh, there are times when just a crazy idea just takes hold in my brain and I'm like, hey, we're doing this, uh, even if it's nuts. Hopefully we'll have some cool things to show uh, on the channel uh, in the future soon. In the meantime, I hope you get out there and get to do something awesome and I'll see you next time.